everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. Today we're making a soap and we're going to be putting some banded agate on the top. Now banded agate comes in layers of colour, all sorts of different colours and because of the look of this soap I've been inspired to have yet another go of doing a wool pour soap. Now I've never been that successful at making them so let's go and see if we can actually successfully pour a wool pour soap. Let's go. All right, so let's jump straight into this one, pouring my lye solution into my oils, mixing to emulsion, and then we're gonna split it out for some really bright, cheerful colors. we are using is some blush and all of these colors will start to make sense as we move along this soap we have got some tangelo to make a nice deep orange sort of color I then have my favorite purple which is eminence and then as our last color we have my favorite green from my micro obsession, which actually has a little bit of that purple in it as well. This is elusive, so we're gonna pour some of that one out. Into my big container, I have some titanium dioxide. It needs a bit of a shake. And I'm going to whiten my base up. So we'll get these colors mixed in and then we'll put the fragrance oil in. oil today is hopefully a very trusted fragrance oil um, it usually does play really well though poor Lee over at Wicked Lee the other day um, she had a little bit too much titanium dioxide and it didn't play nicely in that but it usually loosens up a soap batter which is why I've gone for this one because I want to try and get some sort of layers of color in this soap so I'm going to get these, this all mixed in and hopefully this does stay nice and fluid for me. We're having a bit of a shocker this month with our fragrances. They are either really thickening up or they are um, staying really, really, really fluid and you can't get too much done with them. But that is the joys of soaping. Now I've chosen to go with these colours today and we're going for that sort of layered look because we are making a soap using banded agate now I can't really give you much to do with the chakra because depending upon the color of the agate will depend upon which chakra that it actually um, associates with the agate is generally associated with the Gemini and Virgo um, zodiac signs and is governed by the moon and is a has the elements of earth um, it is a stone also known as the earth rainbow. It is the stone of inner stability. And there are so many different colors of agate and each stone has their own sort of purpose of what they can actually bring to you. But in general, an agate will increase concentration and honesty and help with memory. Um, it helps to bring clarity and it soothes and calms um, inner anger and tension. They are a slow stone to work. So if you are wearing stones um, to um, find, as a spiritual thing, you find you often have to wear the, um, the agates for a longer period of time than some of the other stones to have any sort of um, benefit from them. All right, so we've got my mold here. I'm just popping it up under some um, towels here. I want to kind of do a wall pour and get some layers in between my colors and my white and, and that sort of thing. We'll see how it goes. It's been a long time since I attempted to do a wall pour and I pretty much gave up because every time I tried to do it, I just made an absolute mess. What I do think we're gonna have to do is I don't think that that white in that pot is gonna do me any favors. So let's pour some of that out to make it a bit more manageable. And the idea behind this is I am doing banded agate. So 
generally the banded agate does have bands of colour through it. mess here but pleased to say that is oh I don't know about the umpteenth time I have attempted to do a wall pour soap and I have actually been able to do it this time so I'm really happy usually it's either way too fluid or it sets up too quickly I'm just gonna throw a little bit of texturing on the top of this I'm gonna leave it set up just a little bit more so our um, gemstones don't sink and then we will come back and we will put the gemstones on the top all right so this is set up enough that we can now start to put our banded agate on the top and as you can see we have got all sorts of colors we've got some yellow we've got the dark purple we've got that beautiful rich green we've got some pink and one of these has got some green and orange on them my favorite piece because hubby and I went through these trying to pick out not only stones that were going to fit on the soap but also the ones with the most prettiest patterns I think my favorites down the bottom here let me grab it here it is. Who else is getting some real Nemo vibes out of that one? It just reminds me of the movie Finding Nemo, <laughs> the little clownfish. So I'm going to start popping these on here. So as you can see, they are in layers of colour and that is what makes them part of the Chalcedony quartz family so they build up in those sort sort of layers and they're layers of silica and quartz and they often have other minerals in between them as well which is where all those different colors actually come from and they are a metamorphic rock so if you remember from some of the earlier videos that means that they transform under intense heat so they are generally found around volcanic sort of areas so I'm going to pop that one in there. That one's really, really pretty. does look like lots of little rainbows on that one. So these stones, as you can see, they are found in pretty much every colour of the rainbow. And they even come clear as well. But there weren't any clear ones in here. Though you do get some little clear patches in some of the sort of layers of this soap. I really love the deep purple of that particular stone in there. Um, there aren't any myths about these ones, unfortunately. Oh, we're having all sorts of troubles with these. I actually think I've got a little bit of oil on my hands, which is not helping with me to be able to grip these. So they're going all over the place. But I'm going to keep trying, trying to get in between the lines. So as I said, there are actually no sort of myths about how these stones actually formed, but there is quite an extensive history on the use of these, of agate in general. And it can in fact be um, dated as far back as Neolithic or the New Stone Age times. And they were generally used as ornaments or in amulets. And they've also been found in Babylon civilization as well. The ancient Egyptians in Greece um, did actually use these stones as a medicinal purpose. Um, obviously not consuming them, but they did have that sort of um, spiritual belief in what the stones could bring to them. Now um, agate was actually one of those stones that influenced the whole sort of cutting and polishing of tumbled stones particularly in Germany in the 15th century. So we've got this beautiful agate to thank for all the beautiful sort of tumbled polished stones that we get today. I'm going to go with a green one in here. We've got two more pieces. So there really isn't actually much to tell about the agate like there is about some of the others, but they have been used for a long, long time, mainly as ornamental sort of things 
let's get that last piece that piece is really pretty it's got both orange and green on it as well all right so we've got all of our pieces of banded agate in there I can't wait to get this one cut open so I can see what effect I have got on that um, wall pour there hopefully we get those bands of color like you can see in those pieces of agate so we'll be back in just a minute and we'll get it cut open so let's cut into our banded agate soap. I am pretty excited to cut into this one. I have tried doing wall pours in the past, but I've always ended up with it being fluid at the start of the pour and then just way too thick about halfway through and having to give up on that pour technique. So I was really excited that this one went all the way through. I'm just making sure I have missed all of those stones so we don't get any wonky cut soaps. It's looking pretty good so far. All right, and this is smelling great, but then black raspberry vanilla always does and always holds up well in soap too. So let's get through and take a look. <laughs> well, thank goodness for editing because I just said <laughs> a rather naughty word. Look at that. That is absolutely stunning. If I grab this piece from down here if I can do it one handed that is a piece of the banded agate on there and you've kind of got that pinks and purples and oranges all the way through that piece and that's just how this soap looks I am so stoked that I have finally oh wow been able to get this wall pour done so if anyone else has been struggling to do that technique do it with black raspberry vanilla because it works and I, d I don't think I could have asked for a better design pattern on this particular soap. I am so super happy with them. Let's grab these two here. Oh, I just, I can't even explain how happy I am with these. So in case you hadn't worked it out, I am super happy with how these soaps have come up. They're about to head off onto our curing rack where they will stay until they are ready to go out in our August release of gemstone soaps. If you follow along with me on Instagram, you'll see when these ones are available on the website. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I've made my banded agate soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until, oh, until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye.